In this segment, we'll briefly talk about the mathematics of finance, uh, which is uh, going to underlie compound interest and exponential growth. So the basic idea is that you go to a bank, and let's say that you want to, it doesn't really matter which perspective you take, whether you take the bank's perspective or your own, um, one of you is going to receive interest while the other is going to pay interest. So the bank is going to offer you, we'll just say, um, a 12% rate. And we call this an APR for annual percentage rate, so APR. Um, now that often is confusing to most people because that doesn't say that, that doesn't really say a whole lot. What they typically omit is how frequently you are going to receive interest. So compounded monthly means that you'll be given month, uh, interest every month. Now that may sound great. You may say, oh, well, if I invest $100 then um, in month zero, then in month one, or excuse me, one month later, we usually start with time zero. One month later, we would expect me to have 100 times 1.12, which is 112% of what I started with, $112. Well, that's not in fact what happens. In fact, that's not even what you'll get over the course of a year. The way this actually works is if you invest $100 and they pay you 12%, that means they're gonna pay you 12% over the course of one year. Um, but one year consists of 12 months. So they literally divide that rate into 12 pieces and they say we're going to pay you 1% per month. Okay, so that's where we see the compound interest formula which says that the future value, um, sometimes we write that as A or the accumulated amount, is equal to the present value or the principal times 1 plus the rate divided by N. Okay, and I'll define all these little pieces here. So A is uh, the accumulated amount. Accumulated amount. This is sometimes referred to as the, as the future value, which that's what we'll call it. And um, P is the principal, or sometimes referred to as the uh, present value. Okay, so then why do we take, we see that the one, we have that in the parentheses, we have one plus, um, sorry, uh, we, we saw that here, 1.12, what we really should have in that parentheses is 1.01, if we're only looking at the future value in one month. Okay, so we get that interest one time, so actually after one month you have $101. Well, R is the APR. Sorry about that. R is the APR. So we take the APR and we're actually dividing it by N. So what is N exactly? Well, N is the number of compoundings per year. In this case, we had n equals 12. So we took our initial value, our, our, our present value, excuse me, 1 plus the rate, which has to be as a decimal. We never work with rates as whole numbers unless told that we need to. And um, in this case, we were only looking at one month. Well, t stands for the number of years. So uh, if we were only looking for one month, well, we'd need to figure that out. T would actually be one twelfth of a year, and N is the number of times interest is paid each year. So if we did 12 compoundings per year times one twelfth of a year, that would really just mean take 100 times 1.01 and raise it to the first power. Uh, so in that case, we'd have $101. So that's sort of where the formula comes from, the logic of it. If we were looking at the full 12 months, well, we'd have 12 here, for the number of times it's paid per year, times the number of years, which would be one in that case. And so basically you'd be earning 1.01 .01 or 1% 12 times. It'd be multiplying 100 12 times. So let's say I wanted to know the future value after one year. Well, I would take my calculator. I got $100. And I really like to emphasize thinking about this in conceptual terms. So not just plug things into the formula. But OK, so I'm, I'm earning a monthly rate of 1%. And I'm going to be earning that for really 12 times 1. 12 month times per year times 1 year. So really I'm just taking the monthly rate.